Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Nathan Fox, uh, one of the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. With me today is Eric Johansson, one of our amazing tutors at LSAT Demon. Eric, we've got an email here from Lillian. Lillian writes, I'm a junior in college taking the August LSAT this year so that I have a full year to retake the test if I do not score up to my standards, hoping for a 173 plus. I like that you're giving yourself that long timeline. I have been studying consistently for the past three months, alternating between taking timed sections and untimed sections. I also diligently keep a wrong answer journal where I review why I have gotten questions wrong and what I will do in the future to avoid those mistakes. My problem is that I consistently miss two or three questions on every section, no matter how much time I take to dig into those questions during or after the section. I was wondering if you have any advice for students who have already gotten into the 165 plus range of scoring, but have not yet consistently been having perfect test sections. Best, Lillian. Hmm. I think you got to dig into your specific mistakes. 165 plus is good, but there's a gap. I mean, there, there's, there's gaps in what you're understanding about the test. And the test is going to give you the feedback directly. You're, you're missing, you say, two to three questions on every section. Oh, no matter how much time I take to dig into those questions during or after the section. Hmm. We don't know if Lillian is an LSAT demon student. Like, are you doing this on your own, Lillian? Or, or are you, when you say you're digging into the, the mistakes mm -hmm. after the section, what does that digging in look like? For an LSAT demon student, it would look like reading the written explanation first, because the written explanation should be the clearest and the fastest. Well, Watching... I'm gonna, let me, let me cut you off there. I would say oh. first trying to get it right on your own. Sure. On sure. First, review it on your own, figure it, yeah. see if you can figure it out. But, but, but there's a, there's a, a pitfall there, which is that students will redo the question. They'll pick the right answer the second time through mm -hmm. and they'll think, oh, I understand it now. Yeah. You have to be honest with yourself about whether you actually understand it or not. And that is, it, that is a muscle that you have to build that self-honesty about whether or not you understand it. Yeah. Because there's most questions have one clear, correct answer, mm -hmm. at least three garbage answers and maybe one answer. It could be one or two answers that if you misinterpreted them or if you didn't read them carefully, they could look like they could be answering the question, even though they're not, but mostly it's one. If there, if there's ever one that's like actually tricky to get rid of, there's, there's not two of those answers. There's at, at best there's one. Yeah. Scare quotes, good, wrong answer, but it's not even good because no. it is conclusively wrong. So what I'm saying is, you know, if that's what you picked when you missed it, then going back and doing the question again and picking the right answer should be kind of trivial because now the most attractive wrong answer has been eliminated from contention. So the fact that now you can see which one's right, I just don't, that doesn't mean anything to me in terms of whether you actually understand it. It's better that you did pick that answer than you picked yeah. one of these other garbage answers. So don't get me wrong. Like it's, it's a step in the right direction, but it still doesn't necessarily mean, uh, Eric, that you understand. No, you're right. You're, you're totally right. I, I just think that that's an important step is to practice not just picking the right answer because it's the one that you didn't pick the first time, but <laughs> right. I would like for you to be able to on right. your own, see if you can explain, like you like to say, stand up in court, say your honor, I'm picking this one because, <laughs> yeah. And can you do that before you look, just give it your best shot to do that before you go looking at the written explanation. But I, as I cut you off, you were about to say, sounds like Lillian maybe isn't making use of, all of the resources that the demon has to yeah. get you to the right answer. Yeah, but you're right. I can say more about that before we even get sure. to the demon resources, Yeah, which is, yeah, I mean, it, it's similar to like 
you know, you got an eight year old who is having some of their privileges taken away and then they're apologizing to you because they want to get their iPad back. <laughs> and, and, and you're, you're wonder, you're, you're wondering whether they really understand their mistake. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Are you just saying sorry so that you could get your iPad or what are you sorry for? Like, what did you, can we talk about that a little bit more? What was it that you actually did wrong? Do you really understand why that's not okay? Mm -hmm. And so for Lillian, when you're looking at your mistakes, I think that's the kind of scrutiny that you want to apply, which is, okay, look, I, not only did I pick the wrong answer, but I failed to pick the right answer. So that's two different mistakes. Why did I pick that wrong answer? What was it that attracted me? Why is it conclusively wrong? How could I have done that better in the first place so that I wasn't attracted by this wrong answer? And separately, that right answer, why didn't I pick it the first time? How could I avoid making that mistake? What is it about that answer that makes it conclusively the right answer? Why is this answer so good? And why is that answer so bad? And how can I avoid making the two mistakes that I would have to make in order to miss a single question? Now, you can do that on your own. I think it's more efficient to do it with help. Mm -hmm. LSAT Demon has help at a variety of different levels. We've got um, a basic plan that is dirt cheap if you qualify for the LSAC fee waiver. Uh, it's $95 a month if you don't qualify for the LSAC fee waiver. And it has the best written explanations that are available. It has the best video explanations that are available. Frequently, multiple videos, one from me, one from Ben, sometimes videos from other teachers at the Demon, so that you can dig in deeper into mm -hmm. those mistakes so that you can figure out, well, what is it? What's happening here? Then it has, on every single question, it has the ask button. And you can use the ask button to talk to, Eric, you do ask button work from time to time. Mm -hmm. You can talk to this amazing team of tutors about those questions and about those explanations so that you can really reach that full clarity where you feel it just click into focus. Like, oh, okay, now, now I get it. And uh, so Lillian, I hope that you are, um, if you're a demon student, I hope that you're using those resources. If you're not a demon student, I would at least sign up for a free account so that you could see all of the amazing stuff that we are talking about here. If you have no budget for LSAT prep whatsoever, there are still free resources at LSAT Demon that you can use. You also could think about getting yourself a study partner if you have no resources, because just teaching and hacking through it with, uh, with a confederate could uh, help you to, uh, to get the clarity that you're going to need to get from 165 to 173. Totally. One last thing that I'll say. Yep. And maybe you can speak on, we talk about it all the time, but I noticed that Lillian's final question is, can, do you have any advice for students who have already gotten into the 165 plus range of scoring, but have not yet consistently been having perfect test sections? And I just want to say that the goal when you're taking a section should not be to get yeah. a perfect section. Yeah. It's not about scoring perfectly on the section. It's about scoring perfectly on the one question that you're on. Yeah. Do that. And then you're on to the next question right. and you're thinking about that one question. So it's always about yeah. one question at a time. If part of your mind is thinking about, oh, what does it take for me to be perfect on this section? I would really like to be perfect on this section. When am I going to be perfect on my section? Right. You're distracting yourself from what it really takes, which is just to focus on one question at a time. And potentially racing the clock, right? Yeah. You're, you could be letting the perfect be the enemy of the good here, because to improve from 165 to 173, you don't have to be perfect on any section. You just have to do a couple more questions. You have to make a couple fewer mistakes per section. If you're already finishing the sections, you probably shouldn't be because you're making too many mistakes. You've got to clean up those mistakes. If you are at the point where you're scoring perfectly on the questions that you attempted, but you're running out of time, which I really doubt that that's the case here, 
But if that were the case, then yeah, you've got to figure out how to dismiss the wrong answers a little bit more quickly so that you can get to one more question. But you don't need to finish the section and shoot for perfection because you're 15 LSAT points away from perfect. If you improve a little bit on three sections without being perfect, you still might find that you start scoring in the 170s, which is a real step in the right direction from where you currently are, Lillian. And I will say one more thing here too. I noticed earlier, she said that she is diligently keeping a wrong answer journal. That right. is not something that we teach at LSAT Demon. If you actually learn from those mistakes, I don't think you have to ever go back and review them again. So keeping a wrong answer journal, I think is a waste of time. I think people frequently use it as an excuse for not really understanding. They write sure. down a bunch of convoluted bullshit. You know, maybe they read an explanation and they write some of the stuff from the explanation in their wrong answer journal. And then, but the truth is that they just didn't really grasp it. Once you feel yeah. that click, you know, like you don't write a journal that keeps track of your bike every time you fall off your bike. You just learn <laughs> from that mistake. You learn what it feels like to ride the bike and stay on the bike. And I, I don't, yeah, I just don't think that we need to like, yeah, keep a record of those mistakes. I tend to agree with you and I never kept a wrong answer journal. I, I will. Mm -hmm. I, I'm more open to the idea of it. I like the idea that Lillian, I like the questions that Lillian is asking. Why did I get that question wrong? What am I going to do in the future to prevent that mistake? And if jotting down some notes, you know, writing can be helpful in the process of sorting through your own thoughts. So if, if that's what's going on, I don't have a problem with that. I think you don't want to be too precious about your wrong answer journal and like go back to look at those notes. That's later. the thing is that I just don't think you're ever going to go back and look at it. Sure. And, and so instead of a wrong answer journal, I would think of it more in terms of a. Um, yeah, I guess if what you're doing is you're writing down the explanation. Of like, I see it now. Here's why the right answer is right. Here's why the wrong answer is wrong. Here's why I picked that wrong answer first time through, but I see now why it's wrong. Here's why I didn't pick that right answer the first time through, but I see now why it's 100% correct and how mm -hmm. I would pick it in the future. If that's what you're doing is you're just organizing those thoughts into mm -hmm. your wrong answer journal, then that's fine. But I just don't see how you would ever productively go back and use a wrong answer journal if you're doing, if you're really understanding it, then I don't think you need to understand it again. My two cents. I agree. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.